<clears throat> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. And now, boys and girls and various, it's homework time once again on the Pope on Film podcast. Ahem. People of the internet, your attention, please. Stop your planking and your ice bucketing and kindly pay attention. Each week, the Pope on Film podcast assigns homework in the hope of bettering its listeners Nay, mammals everywhere. And this week, Dora, 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 the Bunsplorer. Mm -hmm. This week, we are going off the air with a series of bizarre, trippy Adult Swim videos that I have ever so graciously dubbed Organic Acid. Yes. LSD without the LSD. Acid without acid. And can we talk for a minute... Can we go on a slightly topic-adjacent rant here and talk for a bit about the so-called war on drugs? Okay. Because the war on drugs is coming back. The war on drugs is coming back. Yeah. So absolutely weird because living David and Goliath, da living Davy and Goliath character Rex Tillerson is restarting the totally failed war on drugs, starting with a big crackdown. On the marijuana, the pot cigarettes, reefers. Well, we're expecting Rex to defect. Hoping. There's, there's reason to think that Rex is done with the administration now, that he didn't get what he wanted, which was to lift the Ooh. Russian sanctions. So he may be yeah. gone. But Jeff Sessions oh, is being well, a big be bag. Yeah, and Jeff Sessions. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's fucking ridiculous. It's ridiculous BS because, A, numerous studies have shown that the war on drugs was in no way a success. It cost billions and billions of dollars, and it cost people their lives, and it pointlessly fed the prison system with a disproportionate amount of minorities. A white polo player gets a slap on the wrist for rape but yes. a black man could get decades in prison for buying and or selling a plant. Yes. The war on drugs is bullshit, but the 80-year-old alt-right imp, imp Rex Tillerson and uh, what's-his-nuts, they're bringing it back. Amazing. Wow, Zima's back, Roseanne's back, Crystal Pepsi's back, Will and Grace is back, Trickle Down Economics is back, The Rhythm Method is back, and the bullshit <laughs> fucking war on drugs. Can you believe that? <clears throat> okay. Especially now that we have verifiable proof that it is bullshit. I mean, how long have they been screaming about marijuana? And now we have many states... <laughs> With legal recreational marijuana, and just about every state has medical marijuana. Yeah. You know? And Except Colorado yes. is doing fucking great. Yeah. It's raking in a lot of money that's going to schools for medical marijuana. You know, it's, it's like they threatened us for years and years with porn and how horrible porn was and everything like that. And now porn is everywhere. Porn is easily accessible, and the world has not exploded. Yeah. Again, you can easily get porn from the magical supercomputer that's in your pants. Yes. At any time. Mm -hmm. For free. And porn is mostly a joke. I mean, you can get away with a little porn joke at work. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, just something innocuous. But you, you can do it now, and you can argue about the merits of porn or not. That's a different thing. But the world didn't explode like we were told. Oh, if this happens, then that's it. Then that's it. That's the big one. You know? Yeah. It's ridiculous. And then it was the same thing with marijuana. And it's like, look, guess what? No, a lot of people are actually being really helped. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We're making, so that was we're making money for the state. And everybody in the state is A-OK -okay with that. Yeah. I, I I like 
states that have legalized marijuana, I just don't think that the tourism is there yet. I mean, yeah, uh, they, they've legalized marijuana in Nevada. Great. You just can't smoke it anywhere. Yeah. Unless you live there. Yeah. You know, so it's like, okay, well, Nevada is a tourist town. It is a tourist destination. So it's like I'm not going to go someplace that has um, marijuana if I don't have the means to smoke it. I can't go to yeah. my fucking hotel and smoke it, you know? It's yeah, gonna... well, we have been battling with marijuana clubs, and they seem to have won out at last. And those are fun. You know, nice. we, we have marijuana nice. clubs, and you can go and you can get a joint off of them or... Um, do dabs. I like doing dabs in clubs. Um, huh. And whatever. they, You know, one night we went to the one club and um, it was stand-up comedy night. Nice. And one of my friends was performing. Some guy I know off of Facebook. So it was like, oh, cool. You know, so there was, there was a show and you watch the show and then you come down and you go home. Nice. That's yeah, so what that Vegas needs. Fun. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. That's what every state that has legalized marijuana needs, because it's like here, marijuana is legal now. Don't smoke it anywhere. I, I can only imagine that they're like the Amsterdam coffee houses. Yes, that's the sort of thing that you need is is just a public place where someone can smoke it. Because if not, then having it legal in Nevada means nothing unless you know someone who lives there. You yeah. can't smoke it in public. You can't smoke it in a park. You can't smoke it in your car. You can't smoke it while you're driving. You can't smoke it in your hotel. So if I go to Nevada, uh, I can't smoke marijuana. It's legal. Yeah. I just can't smoke it. Well, it, at least it's there, so they may expand it. You know? Yeah. 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 So, that's, so that's point A. Now here's number B. Republicans in the far, far right hate the government. They believe in states' rights, that each state in the nation should decide its own laws and govern itself, independent from the evil federal government. Yeah. That's what conservatives like to say that they believe. Yeah. They, they like to say that's what they believe in, but it's all bullshit because Republicans say, states' rights! States have the rights to govern themselves. States' rights! Uh -huh. So then the states go, wow, thank you, Republicans. That's very nice of you. And speaking of states' rights to govern themselves, the people of our state had a little uh, 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 vote, and we've overwhelmingly voted in favor of making it legal to smoke one plant. Uh-huh. But then the Republicans are suddenly suddenly like, oh, yes, fuck states' rights. Yeah. And, 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 and screw your naturally growing plant. The whole thing is just insane. It's an insanely rigged system. It's, a, it's insane what is happening in America today. Donald Trump said, make America great again. But literally everyone in Donald Trump's team, each person in Donald Trump's team has a different time period in mind. Yeah. In terms of when America was last great. So Donald Trump is all, America was great in the 1960s, back when you could grab a woman by the tits and she wouldn't be such a bitch about it. <laughs> and Rex Tillerson, who looks exactly like an older version of the evil mannequin from Goosebumps, he's all, yeah. America was great in the 1980s, back when people just said no, and this is your brain on drugs, back when we invented crack to arrest all the coloreds. Yes. EPA head Scott Pruitt is all, America was great in the 1920s. We need to work hard to get our nation's underage children back in our nation's coal mines. Yes. Fuck Donald Trump. Uh, fuck, uh, fuck everybody. Fuck the entire Trump administration. And it sucks because this is the first time that I was going to mention him on the podcast, and now he's not even here anymore. Yeah. He's not even around, but I'm going to say it anyway. Fuck Anthony Scaramucci. <laughs> no, he's not even around anymore, but is this where we are now? Have we really fallen this far? It that pissed Trump me off. It pissed me off. That to get corruption, but then he's like hiring characters from Goodfellas. Yeah. You know? 
But what pissed me off the most is he was there and so and gone so fucking quick that this is his first mention on this fucking show. Yep. Yeah, yeah. He he was he was in for such a small period of time that his first mention is like a few days after he's gone. But literally, this guy was so fucking smarmy and so fucking greasy that basically Donald Trump is just please welcome my new attorney general Johnny Two Times. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how you doing? I'm the attorney general. Attorney general. So now, uh, if what's his name leaves, papers, papers. if what's his name leaves Lucha Underground, we know who to get. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Daniel, Daniel Cueva. Uh, Dario Cueto. Dario Cueto. Okay. Fucking crazy. Yeah, but we could just we clarify. could just get the mooch instead. He would be a yeah, perfect fucking yeah. fit. Yeah. Yes, Maxwell. Is, uh, uh, another guest? There's another guest? Okay, hold on, because I'm on a roll, okay? Just hold on. I want to clarify, uh, I hate the war on drugs, but to be clear, I don't do any. And it's not because um, I am against drugs. I'm just a lightweight in everything. Yeah. I have always been a lightweight, and I am a lightweight. This is what I do pretty much every weekend. Oh man, I don't have to work tomorrow. This is great. I'm gonna go get like a like a like a like a tall boy, like a pint, or I'm gonna get like a forty. You know what? I'm gonna get a six pack. You know what? Cheaper to get the twelve pack. You yeah. know what? I'm getting a thirty pack. Natasha can have some. I'm gonna be drinking tonight, and then I have one beer and fall asleep on the yeah. couch. That is my weekend. Basically, you can put that in with anything. Oh, you guys are going to smoke pot? Okay, I'll smoke a little bit. Okay, I'm asleep now. Well, that's basically how Jeannie uses it. She'll yep. have she'll have like a hit or two before bedtime. And then just go to sleep. Yeah. yeah. You know? So yeah. what we really need now is we need some real, actual medical testing. Yeah. Which there isn't because it's still illegal federally. Yeah. So they can't do that. But, like, I mean, that's the one thing I, I want people to be aware of when it comes to marijuana is that just about everything you hear about it is all anecdotal. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But now from there, there is more than enough anecdotal evidence to warrant serious medical investigation. You know? I mean, for me, it helps a lot with the depression and anxiety. Okay? Yeah. And yeah. for pain, when I had the boil on my back, I mean, you don't know how much those fucking things hurt. You know? And yeah. marijuana kept the pain down to the point where I would I would say about two Vicodin worth. Nice. You know? Yeah. So I swear about it because these are the effects that it had on me, but that's still anecdotal information. It is yeah. doing things. It is doing a lot of good for people with Parkinson's disease. Yeah. You know, and other that's seizure that's disorders. When I was in California, I could have gotten a medical marijuana license for the PTSD I had after the robbery. Yeah. But I decided against it. Like, I just, I just. I was just so worried about federal crackdowns and like there were all these mar medical marijuana dispensaries in Sacramento, but then like they'd be up for like six months and then, okay, the federal government came in and closed that one down. Well, yeah. Federal government came in and closed that one down. Federal government took all the pot from this place and it was, it just, it just became ridiculous. You know? and, and not only that, but you know, you may have a medical marijuana license. You may be, um, it may be legal for you to use marijuana medical marijuana but if your job decides to right. uh do a urine test for pot they can still fire you yeah even though you yeah. can medically i mean legally use the medical marijuana you can yeah. still yeah. be fired yeah, the whole for using it but there is talk about uh, that of them dropping that is that right in this state for the medical or just any mm -hmm. for just the medical or any um, like they would drop the drug test. Ah. Yeah. 
who's so drug testing to begin with pretty much just picked up marijuana smoke. If you had a cocaine or even a heroin habit, you could slide through pretty easy. But marijuana, you know, cocaine is That's out of your sick. system in 24 hours. Yeah. You know? Um, but marijuana stays in your, in your system for quite a while, like a month. Maxwell, get her another figure. Get another one of your superhero figures for her to play with. So I don't do drugs. Uh, I don't even know where I'd be able to get drugs. I'm in the middle of freaking Oklahoma. Yeah. But being a patriot means fighting against corruption. And the war on drugs is bullshit. The EPA is bullshit now. It now defends corporations and not people. Fuck Donald Trump. This is without a doubt the most corrupt fucking presidency ever, and anyone who thinks differently is really good at wearing blinders. Yeah. So if you voted for Trump, take a good look at your partner because there's a good chance your partner is cheating on you or gay. <laughs> just, just saying, just to be clear. But see now, if uh, if Jeff Jeff Sessions decides to push his little anti marijuana agenda, yeah. What happens? I don't know. What happens? I mean, because that would be war on specific states. Yeah. There's no fucking way Colorado is letting go with this money. Oh, yeah. Not at all. It's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're in the money. They're 42nd Streeting it. Yeah. By the way, guys, um, that war on drug rant that you just heard was from the heart. It was heartfelt, and it is here on the podcast because it was an important thing to say and not because I didn't have a lot to say about this week's homework. <laughs> just want to make that clear. So, yeah. off the air. Off the air. I didn't get a chance to show Jeannie these. I just watched them last night. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Interesting. So Off the Air is a bizarre series on Adult Swim that has garnered such notoriety that it has spawned a bajillion fan on the air videos on YouTube. And I mention this because the we did two videos, Dreams and Nightmares. The first one, Dreams, is in fact a fan one. Really? And the second one, Nightmares, that's the original one. You can tell oh. because the quality is a bit better, and the Adult Swim version has less seizure-inducing moments. And it has Plus, credits. Yeah. Plus, the Adult Swim version has proper volume throughout. Yeah. I learned that a lot. I have a habit of, oh, this is quiet. Let me turn it up. And then, like, ten minutes later, oh, my God, this is so loud. Yeah. Turn it down. For whatever reason, all of the... The late night with Seth Meyers videos on YouTube are crazy quiet. Yes, I'm not they are. Sure why. They're all insanely quiet, and it's ridiculous. But anyway, and Young Turks is usually loud. Yeah. yeah. If I ever watch one of their videos, I got to put it down. Yeah. So I accidentally stumbled onto these on YouTube. I think I mentioned the story the other day. I. If Maxwell and I were looking for something to watch on YouTube, and I remember that wonderful video of Joe Para talks you to sleep. Uh -huh. And I, oh, that was that was a fun bit of homework when we watched that video of Joe Para talks you to sleep. And that's the Adult Swim that I remember, the weird, bizarre Adult Swim, and not the Adult Swim that exists now. I am going to go to Adult Swim on YouTube and see if I can find. Some other really good, weird, old-school old feeling YouTube videos of theirs. And I stumbled on these videos called Off the Air Videos, and I watched a couple of them with Maxwell. And uh, the first one was, a, you know, after, you know, it's done in 12 minutes, and Maxwell's like, Daddy, that was really weird. Can we watch another one? Okay, let's watch this one. It's called Clowns. And then 12 minutes later... Daddy, that's going to give me nightmares. That really scared me. Can we watch another one? <laughs> I'm like, okay. okay. So, so the kids and I watched a ton of these videos. Robots, neon, clowns, water, words, just a bunch. Sometimes Maxwell loves them. Sometimes they freak him the fuck out. But he watches them anyway. He, Maxwell's a good sport. Yeah. These videos are a trip. 
Um, it's a, there are good things to watch if you literally yeah. just want to watch something and you have nothing to watch. Because even the fan edits are pretty damn good, you know? They're, they're, they're visual art. They're visual eye candy. You know, yeah. there's no story or anything like that. It's just moving from image to image. Um, in these two cases, roughly holding a vague theme. Yeah. You know, but like not married to it. So it's just a lot of, it's a lot of what I was, I, it's a lot of what I like about our show. Yeah. Yeah. You know? The videos, the videos are hard to describe. It's like the Matrix, you know, in yeah. the sense of you, you can't describe these videos at all. Wikipedia says that uh, off the air videos, uh, off the air is a quote, show without explanation or narration as a showcase of surreal footage arranged as a single loose theme and blended without pause into a single continuous presentation. Yeah. Wow, Wikipedia, way to hit the nail on the head while also completely missing the point of it all. <laughs> Basically, Wikipedia is data. Yeah. They'll gladly give you a cold clinical definition while also missing the humanity of it. <laughs> so there really is like no way to describe an off the air video. No. So this is this is just what you do. You just go to YouTube, you search off the air, and find an Adult Swim one first, and watch that, and then basically just autoplay yourself into a nice couch coma. But see, now I had watched them in the right order because I had watched Dreams first, and I didn't know it was fan made. I watched yeah, Dreams first, good. and I was like, yeah. "This is this is really pretty cool." And then I was impressed at the credits at the end, seeing it was all one guy, you know? Yeah. And then when I went into Nightmares, what was funny is that first bit of Nightmares with the arms, I had seen that someplace before. Yeah. So that was kind of cool, and it was a cool bit to open up with for Nightmares. Um, yeah. And I was liking that one better than Dreams. But then yep. I saw all the credits at the end and that individual people did each individual piece. I was like, my heart's got to go with dreams now because that was just one dude. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the, the original show off the air was created by a guy. His name is, I believe, Dave Hughes. I don't have it written here anywhere. But he originally got his start as an editor for MTV Animation. So he worked on uh, Beavis and Butthead and Daria and a Celebrity Deathmatch, which used yeah. to be a big-ass thing back in the day. And also Liquid Television. And you can yeah. kind of tell yeah, if you, you remember freaking Liquid Television. Originally, Off the Air was pitched to MTV, and he said, this is what we, we should play like from midnight to 5 a.m. Just a, Ooh. he called it a visual mixtape. And his idea was to literally just have it playing nonstop for like a couple of hours during those late night periods of like 1 to 4 a.m. when no one is watching MTV to just have it playing in the background. And MTV's like, no, no, not at all. There's no way we're doing this. That would so, be fucked up. People would watch that. Oh, yeah. I'd watch the shit out of that. Because it's the kind of thing that's hard to get out of. Yeah. Because the different yeah. images and the different bits come by so quick. It's yeah. like you, you kind of just have to see what the next one is. Yeah. That's why I'm... Um, I was freaking... surprised. I was very happily surprised with these two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the kids and I, last weekend, we ended up watching like a good hour and 15 minutes of these. We, yeah. we we did we did like I described like I just searched off on uh, I searched off the air and the kids and I together watch dreams and then we watch nightmares and then we just let it play yeah and and Bella was like playing a video game and then eventually she was just watching with the rest of us because those are these are some amazing beautiful weird crazy ass videos mm -hmm. really amazing yeah but anyway. That is it for homework this week. We're not done with homework, but that is it for homework this week, kiddos. And we here at the Pope on Film Podcast sincerely hope that your eyes, minds, and wallets 
have all been suitably open. Ah, uh, but don't think you're getting out of here that easily, bro. Thanks, Maxwell. Um, don't forget next week's homework. And for this, for next week's homework, I've got an idea. Okay. We're going a bit old school here. See, I work in receiving. I have my own back room where I work, and I lift heavy boxes, and I get shipments in, and I get the items ready to go out onto the floor. I'm pretty much left alone in there, so I I can listen to whatever music I want. I can dress however I want, and I've always known that. I'm finally now, because it's been so hot lately, actually, I've actually been taking advantage of that. So the other day, I came in like a sleeveless tank top and a sh- pair of shorts. Yeah. And it, that was okay, because yeah. I'm the receiving manager. I'm kind of a, a bit alone back there. I can do whatever I want. So he's, so I'm listening to Adam Warrock and Repo the Genetic Opera, and I'm just I'm back there doing my own thing, like David S. Pumpkins. <laughs> what's, what's Steve doing in receiving? His own thing. So for the past year, another thing that I've been doing is that I've been slowly but surely decorating my receiving area. Decorating it with whatever weird stuff I can find. So I've got this big Guardians of the Galaxy cutout back there. I've got a massive Lego Batman movie poster. We did three different Batman Lego Batman story times, so we had a giant window banner. It was just this massive lego batman movie poster and i didn't want to throw it away so i just put it in the receiving in in the over by the ceiling and so it looks nice i have a cutout monster from battlefield earth yeah hiding in receiving (laughs) yeah i have a battlefield earth i have a scientology monster i love i have i had loved the over your shoulder pictures that you were putting out the other week oh yeah those were fun yeah because I've got so much hiding in receiving. I have an ad for the Atari ET game in receiving. Yeah. I've, it, yes, Maxwell. Dinner is delicious. Yes, dinner is great. We've just been trying to get you to eat it for the last uh, two hours. But yeah, way to finally uh, get in line with the rest of the family, Maxwell. Sorry, that. Love this. Yeah, you and ate it all the time me. and you loved it. And then mommy told me, and then mom told me, and now when I'm, now I'm eating it. And when you get I'm, older, you'll be able to take a picture of it and post it on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, you haven't really eaten anything unless you've Instagrammed it. That's what I've learned. Maxwell. You don't have an Instagram account, so you haven't really eaten anything. Anyway, I got a bunch of stuff hiding and receiving, and it's fun. So I have a new poster. Okay. It's receiving, and I've been staring at it for a, I've been staring at it for a while. Well, I've been at work for about a week or two. I'm just staring at this movie poster, and it's an old monster movie, and it looks so fun and so silly, and so wholesome, and so good, and I've seen the film before. I know it's shit. Okay. But god damn it, the poster just looks so fun, and literally, I, I managed to, to I guess subconsciously, post it right in front of where I work all the time, so I'm constantly staring at this movie poster, and it's just, we have to do it. Okay. We have to do it. And homework? I know I've watched it before. I know you've probably watched it before. I can't think of any details. I might know what movie it is, but God damn it! Next week for homework, we're watching The Beach Girls and the Monster. The Beach Girls and the Monster, okay. One of a handful of interchangeable beach-slash-monster movies. 
which one is this one? I don't know. And that's kind of the point. These films weren't <laughs> made to be remembered. No. They were made to get kids to make out in a drive-in. I'm hoping that the Beach Girls and the Monster is the stupid one where randomly a lion puppet appears on the beach and sings a musical number. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm also not going to look it up because I want it to be a surprise. Have you seen that one? The it movie was directed sound- by a... It does the not movie sound, was, sound familiar. No. The movie was directed by a guy who had his own kitty show in LA for a long uh-huh. time. So here he is doing a movie, and apparently he thought that his he thought that his kitty show was so popular that he worked one of his kitty puppet characters into this horror movie. <laughs> So, so uh, there are all these kids and they're at the beach and they're having like a weenie roast and making out and having fun. And then suddenly a lion puppet appears <laughs> out of nowhere. And it's like, I'm taking off. I'm leaving the premises. Didn't you hear? There's a monster on the surf. <laughs> and they sing a song right there on the beach with a, with a kid's monster puppet. And it's like, wait a second, you do know that this is supposed to be a horror movie. You know what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that this movie is that movie, but I'm not 100%. The film is available everywhere. You want to download it from archive.org, it's there. You want to watch it on YouTube, it's there. It's everywhere. Okay. It's... The Beach Girls and the Monster. The Beach Girls and the Monster. Okay. Yeah. That is what we are watching. For homework next week, there's a pretty good chance that a lion puppet does a musical number in it. I know it's not, I know it's I know it doesn't have Little Richard. I know that. <laughs> pretty sure Little Richard is not in this one. Anyway, that's next week. The Beach Girls and the Monster. Join us next week for more homework. Uh-huh.